this is where it's going to go at your present state of, of consciousness, where you're at now. But if everybody, you know, gets together and starts doing their part in shifting this and, and reaching enough people, we can completely change the outcome here. So it was a, a great inspiration. And I don't really believe we are going to, to, you know, it's not going to be that drastic like the movie 2012. But, you know, at the time, that was a possibility. Well, see, that was at the time, it was in the late 80s, about, 80, about 86 or so is when I began working on the Nostradamus Prophecies. Mm-hmm. And I wrote the three books. It's the only time all the 1,000 quatrains have been interpreted. But, you know, we had contact with Nostradamus himself. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of doom and gloom and was talking about all the things that could happen to the earth. But during the writing, he said, definitely, he said, this is all in the hands of man. He said, None of this is set in concrete. Everything is movable in the future. But he said, if I show you the most horrible things man can do to himself, will you do something to change it? He was showing us the worst-case scenarios. He said, uh-huh. they don't have to happen. And at that time, I was lecturing for many years on the prophecies, and they were all doom and gloom. And he said, man doesn't know the power of their own mind. You create your own reality, and what you focus on is what you create. So if you knew what could happen on one timeline, you could focus on the opposite, and that would be your reality. And if one man's mind was that powerful, then look at the power of group mind. You Mm -hmm. get groups of people focusing on peace and harmony and the opposite. You could create that because the power is not only multiplied, it's squared. And I was traveling all over the world for years telling people this. We can change these prophecies. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed they have changed because we were supposed to be in a horrible mess before the year 2000. Oh, yeah. And we've had wars and things, but not near what he saw. And Mm -hmm. so people say, well, he was wrong. I don't think he was wrong. He was showing us one alternative, the worst alternative, Mm -hmm. and I think we've been able to turn it around, and it's not going to be that bad. I agree. There's an old saying, the best prophets are the ones whose prophecies don't come true because they reached enough people to make a change. That's in in the book. That's what (laughs) he said. I knew we were on the same page. I I don't lecture on the prophecies anymore because... Some of them are still coming true, but not Mm -hmm. the worst ones that he saw. And I think those worst ones relate to the old earth. Mm -hmm. So I can see a difference because it's been 20 years since those books came out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're still out there and people still want to know, is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? But it's all in people's hands. They don't realize how powerful their minds really are. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a... This is a very wonderful time to be alive because we are coming into really big changes. Mm -hmm. It's up to us if we're going to go or not. We're the ones that are going to have to make up our own mind. Yeah, one of the the teachers, she said that uh, there's, I said, well, what's going to happen in 2012? And she said, there's going to be as many realities unfolding as there are people. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was interesting. You know, everybody creating their own reality. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, there's. Well, I know there's, uh, you know, the Earth has her destiny, which is to heal and clean herself up and move to the next level, you know, go through a shift to the next level. And, you know, the collective consciousness has a program, you know, they, however they go through this process, uh, they're going to choose, you know, they can do it the hard way or, you know, release the past, which is what the Pleiadians keep saying, you know, we have to release the past and and get back into the present moment and focus on the future we want to experience. Oh, yeah. And then, well, see, I uh, found the answers, but what I would like to do is to save that for when I'm going to speak at your conference, because I can <laughs> tell you the whole scenario of uh, uh, what what the plan is. But oh, great. We don't have enough time today to go through it, but it's wonderful, <laughs> and I've been getting wonderful response from people that are all excited because now they realize they all have a part in this. Mm-hmm. But let me go into one other thing that I was told that could hold you back. The one was karma. You have to release mm-hmm. karma. The second one that will hold you to the old earth is fear. Mm-hmm. 
Fear is the strongest emotion a human has. If you don't understand something, you, you're you afraid of it. Mm-hmm. And you can draw it all out of proportion. It's a very paralyzing, powerful emotion. So they said the first thing, next second thing you're going to have to do is to get rid of fear. Let it go. Release it. This means don't buy into all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, the stuff on TV, the stuff in the newspapers, all of the fear things. Don't buy into it. You can stand back and observe it. You can be compassionate about what's happening. But understand what what it is. You don't buy into the fear emotion because that's Mm -hmm. what can take you over. That's one thing we have to let go of now if we're going to move into the new earth. Those Mm -hmm. two things will hold us back. Does that make sense to you? Oh, 100%, you know, and let go of the guilt and the unworthiness. And, you know, one thing I found with me in my own near-death experience is when I drowned, I experienced what I call the source itself. And it is so loving and blissful. It was just a golden white light, and it was just pure consciousness and energy. And it was a greater light and conscious energy that I was immersed in. I was unique, yet one with this greater consciousness and, you know, it doesn't have an ego to judge. It, it can't it's total, judge. It's total love. Yeah, it's just pure love and joy and bliss. It cannot even judge. And so, you know, we need to get a new image of what the source is and let go of that old, jealous, wrathful program that we've had rammed down our throats and yeah. and, and learn to just forgive ourselves because we never have been judged. And, you know, it's, it's we keep there, our own books. There is no, nobody up there sitting on a throne condemning and punishing us and judging us. It doesn't happen that way. Mm-mm. Everything that happens to us, even the bad things, are lessons that we have to learn. There's mm-hmm. no judging. And when you get on the other side, you're met with total compassion and love. You're shown your life what you did. And you are the one that judge. You judge yourself. Mm-hmm. And there's no harsher judge than you yourself. That's oh, yeah. the difference. You, know? yeah. you, can't, you can't blame it on somebody else. God did this. God did that. <laughs> and that's what I see, these wrong conclusions from past experiences, the things we haven't forgiven or gained the right conclusion from, just keep cycling in these spirals and just keep coming back harder and harder and harder until we're ready to forgive and let them go. Mm-hmm. I asked them one time, I said, wouldn't it be easier if we knew what, what we came in for, if mm-hmm. we knew what our lessons were supposed to be, if we knew our connections with the other people? And they said, no, it wouldn't be a test if you knew the answers. <laughs> That's why you have to forget it all. And, but now we we're getting it back, and this is the way it's supposed to be. Oh, yeah, 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 you know, that's what I always say. I want the DVD, you know, before I came here. I want, the, you know, to uh, so I can sit and watch and do this, uh, you know, do this a little more rapidly. <laughs> well, that's why the time is speeding up, and we are beginning to become more aware of this. So that's what I said, the veil is lifting, and we're finally beginning to see what we're here for. Mm-hmm. But I've, I have cha- uh, one whole section in one of my latest books about the source, about God, whatever you want to call him. They always call him the source, where people have, in, during my sessions I've had with them, they've gone back to the source. Mm-hmm. And it is so powerful and so beautiful and wonderful, they want to stay there. Yeah. And that's what, I, what they're told while they're under. They they have such an emotion and such a, you know, powerful feeling Mm -hmm. and they said well that the person had wanted to know what it was like so they gave them a little tiny taste Mm -hmm. they said if we give you any more of that they wouldn't want to come back to earth Mm -hmm. because it is so beautiful over there they want to stay there so you have to cut it off you have to live here on earth and but at least you know it's there, and that's where we're going when we finally graduate and get out of mm-hmm. here anyway. <laughs> yeah, there are other options besides this, you know, meat sack that we're running around in right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I think more and more people are becoming aware that there is something more. Oh, I agree. That, you know, this is, I guess it's what our job is. I don't remember mm-hmm. signing on for it, but <laughs> our job is to help enlighten people, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's interesting here is that uh, down in Mexico, 
I can't, I'm in a little fishing village here. Something to change it. He was showing us the worst case scenarios. He said mm-hmm. they don't have to happen. And at that time, I was lecturing for many years on the prophecies, and they were all doom and gloom. And he said, you, man, during the writing, he said definitely, he said, this is all in the hands of man. He said, none of this is set in concrete. Everything is movable in the future. Mm-hmm. But he said, if I show you the most horrible things man can do to himself, will you do Inspiration, and I don't really believe we are going to, to you know, it's not going to be that drastic like the movie 2012, but, you know, at the time, that was a possibility. Well, see, that was at the time, it was in the late 80s, about 80, about 86 or so is when I began working on the Nostradamus process. Where it's going to go at your present state of, of consciousness, where you're at now. But if everybody, you know, gets together and starts doing their part in shifting this and, and reaching enough people, we can completely change the outcome here. So it was a, a great... Prophecies. Mm-hmm. And I wrote the three books. It's the only time all the 1,000 quatrains have been interpreted. But, you know, we had contact with Nostradamus himself. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of doom and gloom and was talking about all the things that could happen to the earth. But 